Good, Good morning. morning. <laughs> Welcome back to Breakfast with the Silvers. Today is January 22nd, 2023. We have changed set locations for the next eight, nine, nine days. days. So it's exciting and today is, today is exhausting. <laughs> okay, the promise fulfilled. The promise fulfilled. I don't want to rush. The promise. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Genesis 21 2. And the Lord visited Sarah as she had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God hath made me laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham, that Sarah should have given children suck. For I have borne him a son in his old age, and the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be the heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman. And all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And also of the son of the bondwoman, will I make a nation, because he is thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and took bread and a bottle of water, and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child, and sent her away, and she departed, and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat her down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Mm. Arise, lift up the lad and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water, and gave the lad drink. And God was with the lad, and he grew, and dwelt in the wilderness, and became an archer. There's a lot, there's a lot there. Yeah. So Isaac, his name means laughter. And a bow's length off. What is a bow's length off? Is that for me to answer? <laughs> She'll find out and put it in the description. <laughs> well, wait, are you asking me or asking them? I'm asking you as well. There you go. You guys have a homework assignment. <laughs> I don't. Well, I don't know. I mean, I can. Back. I can speculate, but that would be on my in, my in, intellect based on today's. What I was thinking of that was that that bow's length away. Yeah. When Jesus was at the Garden of Gethsemane, mm -hmm. he was a stone's throw away. Right. So what's the distance of a stone's throw, and what's the distance of an archer shot? Yeah, obviously much farther. Yeah. Right in that house where Isaac and Ishmael lived were the seed of promise and the seed of flesh. There was strife and trouble there, for Ishmael was teasing Isaac. You will find that there is nothing that is going to hold you except the Isaac life. 
the seed of Abraham. I might have a, I might have something to share with them. Good. I just because I've been marinating on it like uh -huh. all morning. You will find that the flesh life will always have to be cast out. And Sarah said, cast out Hagar and her son. Genesis 21.10. It was very hard to do, but it had to be done. You may have heard how hard. Yes, but how long did it have to be? It had to be until submission came. There will always be jealousy and strife in your hearts and, and lives until flesh is destroyed, until God controls and rules in authority over the whole body. When his power reigns over you, you will find that your whole life is full of peace and joy. Isaac grew up to be a fine young man, perhaps 20 years of age. We are not told, but then came another test. God said to Abraham, take your son Isaac and offer him to me upon the mount that I will show you. See Genesis 22, 2. Do you think that Abraham told anybody about that? No, I'm sure he didn't. Isaac was near to his heart, and God said that he had to offer him on the altar. And there he was, Isaac, the heart of his heart. And God said he was to be the seed of all living. What did he have to do but believe that, just as miraculously as Isaac came into the world, God could raise him even if he were slain? Did he tell Sarah about the thing? No, I am certain he did not, or else he would not have gotten away with that boy. There would have been such a trial in the home. I believe he kept it to himself. When God tells you a secret, don't tell anyone else. God will possibly tell you to go and lay hands on some sick one. Go, do it, and don't tell anyone. I know that Satan does not know my thoughts. He only knows what I let out of my mouth. Sometimes he suggests thoughts in order to get to know my thoughts. But I can see that God can captivate my thoughts in such a way that they may be entirely for him. When God rules in your heart, you will see that every thought is captive, that everything is brought into obedience and is brought into a place where you are in dominion because Christ is enthroned in, in your life. 2 Corinthians 10 4, verses 4 through 5. God reveals deep and special things to some people. Keep your counsel before God. I see this, Abraham could offer Isaac. I believe that God wants me to tell you how so that you may know something about your trials. Some people think they are tried more than other people. Trials are used to purify you. It is the fire, fiery furnace of affliction that God uses to get you in the place where he can use you. The person who has no trials and no difficulties is the person whom God does not dare allow Satan to touch because this person could not stand temptation. It's like exactly what we were ch chatting about yesterday. Mm -hmm. But Jesus will not allow any man to be tempted more than he is able to bear. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Before Abraham offered Isaac, he was tried, and God knew he could do it. Before God puts you through the furnace of afflictions, he knows you will go through. Mm -hmm. If you know you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and you know it is in the scriptures, never rest until God gives it to you. If you know it is scriptural for you to be healed of every weakness, never rest until God makes the healing yours. If you know that the scriptures teach holiness, purity, and divine likeness, overcoming under all conditions, never rest until you are an overcomer. If you know that men who have gone in and have seen the face of God have had the vision revealed and have had all the scriptures made to be the light in their lives, never rest until you come to it. We must live in the fire. We must hate sin. We must love righteousness. We must live with God. For he says we have to be blameless and harmless amid the crooked positions of the world. Philippians 2.15 I look at you now and I say God is able to confirm all I've been saying about trials and testings, which are the greatest blessings you can have. What a redemption. What a baptism. What an anointing. It is ecstasies of delight beyond all expression for the soul to live and move in him who is our being. Acts 17, 28. Thought for today, if you knew the value of trials, you would praise God for them more than for anything. Mm. This is like, I'm telling you, like I, can I talk? Yeah. Okay. So the past 24 hours have been full. I just feel like I'm like 
ready to burst out. Like I have so much I want to share, but I'm going to, I can't do it because I don't want to make a super long video, but I do want to share this for myself. I consider the Bible a form of hygiene and in the flesh, we know hygiene as, uh, taking care of ourselves for our health and for cleanliness. You know, we do all these things every day for hygiene, right? We, we brush our teeth and we take showers and et cetera, et cetera. And we spend our time doing all those things to be clean. We don't always take the time to for the marinate of the word, right? To marinate in the word and to take our time in the word and to make it part of our daily hygiene. And I don't know why earlier this morning I felt so impressed to share that, but I think it I think it was because there is so much going on across obviously across the world, but also closer to home in our own nation where um there's so much under attack. Like it's even more relevant now than ever to get in the word, keep yourself clean, know what the word says. If you don't understand it, cross reference with a different version of the Bible. Like Joel and I will use multiple translations to try to get a better understanding of scripture. So whatever you need to do, do it. But the word is like more important now than ever to not just stay clean, but to stand in a position of power and authority over darkness. It's so relevant. I mean, there is stuff swirling that's like, it's going to make your head pop off. <sighs> People put so much stock in like, I don't know, oh gosh, it's like, I have so much to say and I can't say it. So I'm, I'm trying to be brief, but You know, scripture says like where I think it, I'm going to butcher this, but where your time is spent is where your heart is, mm -hmm. right? I'm, I'm butchering that. I'm oversimplifying it. But if you're spending all of your time in the news, you are not clean, cleansing your heart. And um, I, I don't know. I'm going to have to edit a ton of this out, but <laughs> why is smiling? Because like, I'm enjoying I'm listening like, oh, to blah, 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 blah. But I just... I, I feel like I'm babbling because I can't, I, I have so much I want to share. I can't even get it out of my mouth, which you were going to be like, yes, you can. <laughs> because he knows when I'm hot on something. He wants to shut my mouth up. Get in the word. If you don't know how to do it, ask for help. <laughs> Good. See, See you tomorrow. tomorrow.